Yeah, it's completely true. Every every company is driving to become a fintech company. You know, they used to say software is eating the world, and now they're saying fintech is eating software. Five years back, everybody was saying, I want to become a tech company, um, and they're still saying this. And now they might add, we want to become a fintech company as well. So, yes, fintech is growing, and it's going to be an integral part of everything that businesses do. <laughs> It's the wonderful Angela Strange at A16Z says every company will become a fintech company. All companies will be a fintech or financial services provider is the thesis of Bond. That is why we're building an infrastructure that enables not only fintechs, but what we call brands to be able to distribute financial product. When I think about lots of different technology companies being able to offer financial products, I'm really excited about it. Every business is in the business of selling something and moving money. And so if we can do that faster, more efficiently, and more seamlessly, it is a huge accelerator for anything a business is trying to do. Fundamentally, even when you think of finance or when you think of money, um, it's the transfer of value. And so it makes sense that all of our companies are going to be transferring value and are going to want to make that easier and more seamless. So the, the, the payment process is part of every experience, even in the kind of, you know, kind of B2B context where, you know, suppliers and buyers need to exchange money as part of the service equation. So do I think that that is all ripe territory for disruption and ripe territory for software and banking as a service to come in and play a role? 100%. And you can see it around you every day. If you look at sort of what Uber, for example, is doing, uh, they started out with Embedded financial services is a way to pay their drivers for the driving they do. But now they're talking about credit cards with special rewards. They're talking about banking services. Um, so I really do believe that almost every digital company will be a fintech company. Shopify is a classic example. Uh, they not only offer payments, but they offer entrepreneurs the ability to fund their business, to fund their business so that they can market their business more. These sorts of examples are just showing you know, where finance can go when it's truly embedded, when it's truly modular. But then in the end, they need somebody like us, somebody like, like our Solaris Bank here, uh, because there is the license part which only bank and service players can solve. That creates, in my view, significant opportunities for banks like BBVA and our banking as a service platform, because it enables us to help businesses in a variety of different uh, market segments that that perhaps couldn't be served as easily by traditional banking products. Yeah, in doing so, we really enable the market to address, you know, all people. Let's just make sure that everyone has access to high-class financial products. I think now, more than ever, we have that opportunity. I think the more we kind of keep that in the top of our mind, uh, the more we would maximize the likelihood of that occurring. Like, I think it would be vision unfulfilled if... We just made this really easy for like like people who are already affluent. In the United States, there's still a fairly large population that is underbanked or unbanked, period. And so we're allowing innovators to come in, build on top of a platform, and address market gaps that exist in, 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 in our economy today. What we really need to make sure is, yes, we need to do tremendous innovation for people uh, uh, in Europe, people in the U.S., uh, there are well-banked and underbanked people in those regions. But then let's just take those innovations and also ensure we're doing it in regions where um, um, this would not be a high likelihood unless done through like APIs and completely digitally. So I hope we all keep on moving in that direction and kind of like democratize this for everyone. We're really just at the beginning of this journey. There are some companies who will find it quite easy to embed finance today, whether you're in the e-commerce space. But if you do uh, ed tech, if you do something in clean agriculture, if you're trying to do something in carbon credits, there are so many places that you can embed finance. There are so many ways that some of the APIs, the big techs and the banks of the service providers can remix things and build your own a la carte menu. And that's why every company can become a fintech company, because banking is now fully modular, or at least it's on its way to becoming fully modular. <laughs> If everybody becomes a fintech brand, I do think that there will be some winners and losers in this new ecosystem. 
I think what I'm really interested to see over the next couple of years is we're going through the stage at the moment of banking as a service exploding, like more and more providers coming in, offering lots of different ways to embed financial services. So I think what we're seeing with open banking already um, um, where we think what might happen with open finance still to come, um, I think is going to have a key impact on how customers experience banking as a service, whether it is a benefit to them or if it just becomes you know, a, a tech-based version of the challenges we see for American customers at the moment where they have you know, 15 store cards or 15 credit cards in their wallet and they're desperately trying to keep track of what's where. So, yeah, I, I do think there are risks um, that we have to mitigate as we go forwards. If everybody's offering a card, uh, that's a problem. And that's why I love Curve because that means everybody can offer a card and you still just use one. Uh, so, uh, yes, there is. And then there's also some people uh, uh, probably doing inappropriate services like uh, credit uh, in an uncontrolled way uh, to get conversions in their own uh, and offset the, the risk of their revenues on somebody else. I'm pretty sure that there are some brands whom we would not trust to be our banks, while there are others where we would all say, I'm fine. They they will they won't do bad or bad with my data and so on. So that that's that, that's the big uh, or one of the many big questions brands uh, have to answer over the next couple of years. Like how much trust do they need, and how much of the banking part in there is possible or not possible? Adding those financial solutions actually is a much smaller jump than some people thought. Like I don't think people thought some of these players from the technology side, like like the Googles, like the Apples, were going to be as successful as quickly. People used to say, you know, like, you know, consumers won't trust their money um, to, to some of these um, uh, players. But I used to work at Square, and you see the success that Square Cash is having, right? And it's actually the opposite. Like, millennials in the U.S. trust Square more with their money than they would trust some of the big banks. You can probably see what's happened in supermarkets and, and other retailers. You know, there's goodness knows how many different supermarkets out there, but people only really shop in, in one or two. Um, you know, they, they don't have relationships with with 50 different supermarkets and other retailers. I don't think finance is any different. At the end of the day, the retail customer, they'll, they'll probably go with what's embedded on their phone to a large degree. So that's where Apple Pay or Google Pay or whatever is, is so important. Um, they'll have their main bank accounts. They'll probably borrow money from one or two people, enough to have some diversification there, but not too much to, to have it exposed everywhere. I worry about the cognitive burden that it places on customers if their finance has become too dispersed, too distributed. We know from the research that we do that there's huge value in customers being able to separate that out their finances in some ways, but bring them together in others. So the idea of a, a totally fragmented uh, financial services industry where you have some of your money over here and some of your money over here and, and it's it's all mishmashed together and, and all over the place scares me a little bit. So yes, the answer is the financial services market will totally be oversaturated. Uh, I think where we are today, oversaturation would not be a bad thing because some people have access to financial products, some people don't have access to financial products, some people have access to adequate financial services with a lot of manual intervention, right? They have accountants, they have financial experts, while others don't have the luxury of doing that. So being able to get financial services to a point where it just works for people is quite important. Uh, I think banking will get there at some point. Um, but then just like any oversaturated market, there would be a lot of choice and people will pick by, by, by preference, just like how we do with clothing. So I think that is most likely the outcome. Matt Harris from Bain Cap Ventures talks about FinTech as the fourth platform. So if the internet was the first, cloud was the second, mobile was the third, he places FinTech as the fourth. It might be hyperbolic, but I think it's I think it's spot on. I think it is. I think that's exactly right. If you think about it, you know, fintech is removing friction. It's removing barriers to the free movement of money between you know between individuals inside countries and even between countries internationally. No, I mean finance is fundamental to the world. Money makes the world go round. Um, that ability to make money. Uh, plugged into a modern financial uh, internet-based society is it, critical. Um, I think actually it's been far too long, too slow for us to be able to, uh, to to be able to move small amounts of money very very quickly. It's been very it's hard to move large amounts of money very very quickly. 
yeah, that needs too much at all. So finance is the future of the internet. Yeah, 100%. I think like any other technology layers, right? You know, there was AWS that really opened up storage and compute that enabled a ton of innovation on top. I think having a banking as a service platform will also, you know, enable the market to be able to embed finance into everything that, you know, brands are doing to further engage and offer a better product for their end customers. I truly deeply believe if you want to change the world, you have to change how finance moves. Uh, if you care about human trafficking, uh, responsible sourcing, carbon emissions, whatever it is, there's a way in which finance changes that issue. You know, history is, is full of examples. When you remove barriers and you remove friction, you unlock incredible growth. And that was true in the cloud computing. It was true for internet. And I think that's true for, for financial services. We could fundamentally power up this fourth platform. We could enable every company to become a fintech company. And in so doing, we could create a massive new revenue line for ourselves and really solve some social problems. So if the tools to make financial products, the tools to solve customer problems got a lot more modular, then maybe this does become a platform. Maybe we can start to think of this as as transformative as cloud or mobile. If finance just shows up everywhere, if it's a tool that every entrepreneur can use, what's that gonna mean and how do we enable it?